Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. I've been sick for almost a week now and I just can't take it anymore. At least by now I'm able to talk again without actively hurting my throat. But I still might have to lay low for another week or so. Either way, I've made it back from my space adventures and just in case you were curious, I actually had enough fuel to make my way back directly to the main planetoid instead of getting another refuel. So now my rocket is back and it is being refueled at this moment. If we have a look inside the rocket, we managed to mine a full 2000 kilograms of fullerene that we want to take advantage of right now. Now I figured we could make an addition right here on the right side. I actually rerouted the pipes here slightly so that the excess oxygen I'm getting from my storage system here goes directly into the machine. So now technically we don't need all of these extra gas pumps anymore and we can make some space. I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of those right away. So we're not going to need those two pumps anymore. Also the automation can go and probably most of the pipes here. Yeah, we don't need this anymore and we'll be able to reroute the carbon dioxide as well. As a matter of fact, we might want to do this right away. So I would be setting up another pipe that goes straight over into the carbon dioxide output there. And in order to build that, I'm gonna make my way in here very briefly. Uh, we probably don't need that either. Let me see, this stores some gold. We definitely need that. And then I'm also gonna get rid of this deodorizer and eventually the ladder. Okay, so far so good. I'm also gonna move the auto sweeper right over there. Maybe move the heavy watt wire as well. We don't need this part any longer. And then we should also be able to somewhat encase this. Not that it is necessary, but I think it is going to look much better. Now, let's make the addition here of the molecular forge. Do I actually have one of these somewhere? I don't think so. Yeah, let's just plot this right here and see what we actually require. Unfortunately, there's going to be some manual labor involved in the making of the super coolant. So we'll have to make sure that we automatically provide all the materials so I can just continuously keep on crafting. Let's go ahead and set up the recipe for fullerene. Now, of course, we skipped this step because we mined the fullerene in space. We could also go ahead, produce some graphite and put it together with sulfur and aluminium to get fullerene. So instead, what we can do is go with the super coolant right off the bat. We're going to need some fullerene and gold. Now, maybe if we do this right, we can use the same auto sweeper. I haven't thought about that. The molecular forge doesn't actually have an input pipe. So that is going to make it a little bit harder to automate because we cannot really input the needed petroleum automatically. So maybe instead of doing this, what we could have is two of these guys next to each other together with an auto sweeper in the center. But they are just a little too far up, right? Yeah, I cannot reach the bottom this way. However, we could have the auto sweeper right here in the center, maybe with a storage bin at the bottom. First fill up the full ring and then the rest with gold. And by the way, just to be clear about this, we want two machines so that I can keep continuously crafting without queuing up another command somewhere else in the base and wasting lots of commute time. So that means my next step would be to set up a storage bin here, for instance. And then there's going to be one more thing that we require, and that is the petroleum. So maybe we just set something up here. I don't necessarily need this ladder anymore. And now we can also see one of the overflows of oxygen is directly going into the machine and everything should be processed. You know, the one occasional packet will be deleted, but I do not mind with all the oxygen that I have left in the base. And I think at this point we should actually be able to just deconstruct these two tiles, connect the power normally since we also need to cool down the molecular forge. Instead I'm gonna have a conductive plate here, get rid of these wires. So all of this is gonna be covered by a thin water layer in order to keep it cool. And then right here on this side we're gonna make the tiny storage for petroleum. Just a little something I want to take care of is the goodies that I've been getting from the printing pod. Right now I restricted the access so I don't actually waste my downtime. But it would be nice to actually have access to these guys. And I figured what we could do is just go ahead and replace this with a mechanized airlock. And maybe we're even gonna hook this up to a timer sensor eventually. So the door will go here, timer sensor, and it would be opening up every few cycles or maybe just every cycle. So you're gonna go right there and then we just need some automation wire. And just like that, I should now have access to all the goodies. 
Of course, the printing pot is not going to be able to recharge while the door is open. So we should make sure that we have it uh, closed for as long as possible and then just open long enough for the items to drop through. I'm going to reset the timer just to see if that is enough. Yeah, it can fully open and then fully close. So maybe we can even go down to five seconds. Let's check this out. It is open and closed. Okay, that looks like a good timing. Good thing we got that sorted out now. Let's keep going here with the storage. We just need a little bit here. Yeah, I don't think we're actually going to need more. We just need to resupply it. So there would be a pitcher pump going right here. Actually, before we set up the pitcher pump, I might want to add the liquid vent. Say the liquid vent goes right here and we're just going to grab the petroleum. Now, I'm not sure if the pitcher pump is actually going to be able to get anything out of here. I have to check on that. Otherwise, we just have to slightly rearrange it. Actually, I'm going to rearrange it right away by just placing the liquid vent one over. Yeah, I think that's going to be much better. Okay, that now looks much more reasonable. We have a pitcher pump fully submerged here and we should be easily able to supply both of the molecular forges. So now I just have to hook this up to the auto sweeper and we should be golden. Let's go ahead, set up the recipe, set it to forever. And then we basically also need a way to shut it off, right? Because at some point I'm going to have just enough super coolant and we don't really have to exaggerate. Now we also need a place to dump our extra petroleum that I'm probably going to do here. Now this thing doesn't stop. So I'm going to remove this tile and then maybe it is going to overpressure. But I'm not sure what's happening here. It just seems to keep going. Yeah, that is actually interesting. This thing should overpressure. Hmm, maybe I'm just going to set up a little security measure here. Add a tiny hydro sensor and some automation wire to this guy. And we're just going to detect above 300 kilograms. If that is the case, we want to... No, actually below 300 kilograms. Then we want to open it up. This way we'll always have enough of it. Then of course, let's go ahead and do the storage bin. What is that? Industrial, manufactured... Hmm miscellaneous where's the fullerene ah there we go rare resources nice so i want to make sure i first store all the fullerene that i have available and then the rest of the storage bin we're gonna fill up with gold well fullerene already has been delivered i actually totally missed that let's go to uh refined metals and gold and oh geez i'm actually taking the gold from the other storage here let me see what priority do i have this on just five well i guess now that we have a little it should be all right and i'm starting to craft now did i already provide the petroleum myself probably okay now i'm using the second machine and of course all the super coolant is just dropping on the floor here so maybe instead of having ladders here, we could dump the super coolant here at the bottom and then actually start pumping it up once we have enough of it. Yeah, that would actually make it extremely convenient. I think I'm going to do that. Let me lower the priority here. So we are working on that first. Little bottle emptier right here to dump the super coolant. We're also going to grab all the water that is currently here. And then I need to make sure that in the future no other liquids are going to drop down here. It doesn't look like I run the risk except maybe here with the leaky oil fissure. That might actually have been a mistake. Yeah, I need a little bit of water here so the oxalite doesn't emit too much. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe, maybe just get started over here. Actually, that did not help. All right, then we just have to be quick about it. I can help out if you actually do this. It's so much faster. Bottle emptier is going to be the highest priority. And then we dump the super coolant we already have. Super coolant enable. No, actually not. Disable auto bottle. And we are going to have a high priority for now. Dump all the super coolant. And there we go. That should fix the problems, right? Yes, it actually did fix the problems. Nice. So now we just have to put the auto sweeper one more block up. This is going to allow us to add a hydro sensor here and then maybe a small pump in order to actually get the thing into the storage. So we could just go ahead, add a mini liquid pump right here, get some pipes going, maybe all the way over here. And then we just have to lead it to this bridge. Yeah, this line right here is going into the storage of the super coolant, which is going to be located here. So we're going to be adding some bridges right here and I will be able to make it all the way down easily. There we go. That is fixed and we're going to move all the way up or rather down, I should say. However, I only want this pump to be activated if we have a certain amount of liquid in here. So we're going to hook this up to a hydro sensor. I also want to make sure to clean this up a little bit, except for the oxalite. We cancel the sweeping here. Here are my last two cables. 
And I think I want to get started pumping as soon as we are above, let's say, 100 kilograms. Right now we are at 35 kilograms. Actually, that might already be enough. Let's do 50 kilograms. And now we're going to get those back to priority 5, the molecular fortress. And I should be crafting like crazy. Now the question is, do we want this at a higher priority than the fortress? This would also give me some downtime and might even solve the problem with having to have two machines. But yeah, having the petroleum right here is definitely going to help and improve my crafting rates. We have a little packet here that has been pumped up before I set up the automation. But we can just check that it is actually going into the right thing in above. Yeah, over here, down there. And we have the first super coolant. We cannot even see it yet. But it is definitely there. Oop, there it happened. The hydro sensor has turned on and we are pumping it out. This way it's also going to be quite easy to keep these machines cool. Because it seems the super coolant is always coming out at around 40 degrees. That might actually have something to do with the petroleum, but since we are also cooling down the petroleum to a certain temperature, we should always more or less be fine. Nice, I like it. This really allows me to go nuts on these machines. I just need a way to disable them once I have enough super coolant. One easy way to do this would be to determine when we have enough liquid inside of here. So technically we could just go ahead and hijack this signal here. Mm, I mean, it's going to be a long signal, but I don't think we can avoid all of these. And it would be nice to just go through here like so and actually enable and disable them. So I will have to gain a little bit of access here to be able to build these cables. Should be no problem, especially if we prioritize them. A little improvement I can make for the oxalite refinery is to make this buffer pipe a little bit larger so I can actually process all of the oxygen that is coming in and no packets are gonna go out. And that should be fairly easy if we just do something like that. That's probably already gonna suffice. Oh, I think the cable just has been completed. Yeah, there we go. Now the molecular forges are active again. And of course, as soon as I have filled up this entire chamber here with super coolant, they are going to deactivate and only activate when we need more. And now the goal is basically that I never have to leave this post. I can just dedicate a cycle or two to this machine and then produce an awful lot of the super coolant. Yeah, looking at the work order, I do not regret at all actually setting up two machines. I mean, we don't require more power because we only can work on one machine either way. But will you check this out? It is a phenomenal feeling. I should have done this quite a bit earlier. But man, I've been enjoying the series as it's developed. And I think even though we could already have completed everything in the game, we made substantial progress. And I have a base going on that I'm actually really fond of. I like it. I've been observing it for a little while. The only issue we have is that we are actually producing more than we can pump up with the mini liquid pump. So if I were to do it again, I would leave enough space for a larger pump. Like right now we're almost at 100 kilograms and of course that also means at some point we're gonna overpressure this. You know, to wrap things up, maybe we're just gonna add a makeshift fix for this. All we need is a filter gate. We could set that up right here. Then also have a NOT gate in this place. Yeah, I think that is gonna add up. Let's cut this connection here. The filter gate would then connect to the NOT gate. And what this is going to do is if we detect enough water, the pump is going to activate immediately. And then after a certain amount of time, we want to go ahead and shut off the molecular forges. Because if we have too much liquid in this spot for a very long time, that basically means we cannot keep up. And this would also allow us to make an artificial break in the crafting. All we have to do to make this functional is also reverse the signal here. So I'm also going to add a NOT gate going up there. So now if we are sending a red signal, this red signal is eventually going to be turned into a green signal, activating the molecular fortress. And if this signal becomes green, then the fortress are going to be disabled. But there's a second condition where we have too much liquid and therefore it's also going to be disabled. On this filter gate, I want a really long delay. The longest I can get is 200 seconds. Great, this is actually a very smooth solution, I have to say. So now the fortress are disabled until we have pumped out enough liquid, so the sensor turns red again. Wonderful. I like it and I think at this point we can wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Feel free to drop a like or a comment. I would definitely appreciate that. But without any further ado, have a great time and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.